Hello my friends, welcome back to Shields Only, the challenge run that I have been getting progressively more stressed about despite the fact that we're only on mission 3. <laughs> uh, this is Spear Vadoon. Spear Vadoon is a mission that I am incredibly apprehensive about in a lot of challenge runs because it is really, really hard. Uh, compared to like other level 3 missions, you know, Zero Hour, super, super easy for example. This one hits you with a lot of stuff very quickly and it can be a real pain in the behind. So, as I've said before, in this run, we have one HP buildings, and that is the main reason that I am concerned. It also is going to be the core behind my strategy, which is, first of all, run over here and grab all this money really quickly, make as many probes as we can, and then we're gonna have to be able to defend against that early attack wave without losing anything, I hope. Okay, and then let's talk a little bit about the shield battery. I mean, Karax and Artanis are having a magical little adventure with their conversations right now. However, I don't care what they have to say. If you think this is excessive, I would normally agree with you. <laughs> However, the shield battery in Legacy of the Void only spawns with 50 energy, and I'm going to need a lot of defensive power here. Uh, partially because the enemy on this mission is really, really good at sneaking around and counterattacking you. If I get counterattacked while I'm out on the map, I will lose my entire base. And I also have to defend against attacks on multiple sides with these very soft photon cannons. So I decided in my thinking, well, what if I just kind of circumvent that and instead build a giant series of shield batteries that exist in the cross-pollination area where both sides are being attacked and utilize that as a defensive stronghold. And we're going to give it a go. I think that it's going to be okay. I think that shield batteries are really going to get their time to shine here. And as I was saying earlier, because they start with 50 energy, we have to really early on rush them so they can actually generate what they need. Because if you've ever played multiplayer, Oh, okay. Uh, one for one shield battery in multiplayer has the same amount of energy on spawn as four shield batteries here, which is a little bit of a difference in cost. Uh, we'll save that and put it over on the side. We do have a lot of warp and pylons, which will be kind of nice. They're all right. Oh, gosh. Whoa! Did you see that? Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a day, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no. Well then. Get the probes. We got a cyber core. I think that I might be dead. Yeah, the shield batteries don't have the ability to heal here. My goodness. Welcome to shields only. This is going to happen a lot as we learn to hold on in the early game. I do think the batteries were the right call. I need to have more gas so I can just have more stalkers at the early stages. Interesting. Got it. Um, I'm going to try my best here. I'm going to put this pylon like right there just to mess with the movement a little bit. Because the enemy is not going to be able to target down the pylon. They're going to be busy with the photon cannons and the shield battery. I'm going to go for five here. Yeah. Just a little bit less, and then we can use that to get a cyber core. I will not get the shield upgrade until I've held, and I can use that as a way to afford a little bit more stuff. Well, maybe we want the cyber core just like right here. Just try to get stuff in the way, and then we're gonna get a couple guys on gas right now. Oh, this is a tough opening, isn't it? Mm. I can't believe how quick, like, I knew it was going to be fast, but uh, one of the ways that shield batteries work is even when you don't have shields, the regeneration happens. So when you are getting hit onto your one armor and you're taking reduced damage, you're constantly getting little trickles of shields that are helping out. And without that, it means that things are less than half durable, if that makes sense, in a very weird way. So we're going to have to utilize SimCity here. 
I thought we'd be able to use the SimCity here. I think in the long term, we have to use the SimCity there. However, we're not there yet. So this whole area is probably going to get breached later on, and we just have to live with that. And then cluster everything in this area, maybe get some buildings back here, just so that we're SimCitying right and we can move our army between defense locations. And with all of that in mind, I think we might be able to hold the first attack wave. Those Hydras are real spaghetti, though. Particularly because the Zealot, as an invalid unit, just does not... Like, it has one job, and it has taken down those Zerglings. And he does not do it well today. Alright, I am still a little bit apprehensive about this. But we don't have any other option than to try. Try to get one more... These dudes. Ooh, the Hydra's going in a dumb place. This is ideal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the can's gonna live. Perfect. And then we can come over here. Start taking these down. Got him. We held. Much better that time. Very happy. Oh, let's get a shield upgrade. We, I think that rushing shield upgrades is going to be the play every single time. Because of how insane both the shields themselves are with our half durability and how much value we're going to get from the shield battery. So with the shield upgrade, every single time that you get hit, you're effectively getting value with your batteries. It's kind of like in storing, restoring three shields per one energy, it's four. If that makes sense. I'm sure that that math isn't exactly correct, but... You know, just getting the basic idea across. I would actually like to know that. I remember a long time ago, we were talking about this in the Giant Crown Games Discord, and uh, someone decided to make a giant Excel spreadsheet that was like plug and play with all the stuff. It was a lot of effort, and it was really cool. And the conclusion that I took away from all the data on it is that shield upgrades are super slept on, especially the first shield upgrade is really, really not valued as highly as it should be due to the power of shield batteries. And one reason I'm looking forward to this run is I kind of want to put that hypothesis into action so that we can actually learn how good it is. Because almost always, everybody defaults to attack upgrades because dead enemies can't shoot you. However, non-permanent damage is kind of the same as killing your enemies quickly if that makes sense. Because usually the theory is stuff like Marines uh, being healed by medics or medevacs. It is taking away your energy, which you're probably never gonna hit max, so it's a resource that's constantly being drained. But shields, they come back all the time. They regenerate so quickly. So obviously, once again, the only option that we have is a stalker. I am looking forward to getting more units, however, I think we're going to Sky Shield. I would love to hear people's ideas upon where to go. Our options are Shakoros or Sky Shield. I'm personally very concerned about the Sky Shield defense mission, for one. Oh gosh, that is a lot of stuff. Hey, the Zealots went in a weird way. That's pretty good. I wonder if we can get a move on now. I would like to. I'm just going to keep walling in these shield batteries so that they cannot be connected by melee units. And let's see if we can start the first event. The first event is generally not that bad. I don't think that I can do any of the event skipping because that relies on stalker durability to get to the final objective. And we don't really have that. So it might be steadier to just progressively clear throughout this mission the old-fashioned way. Which I am... I'm not against. So there definitely should not be an attack in the immediate future. Oh, well. <laughs> there's a couple zerglings. Boom. The second power cell is active. The spear sensor array is reacting. I think that they're the ones that come over here, right? Is it Nidus's first? Oh no. I hope it is. 
Oh, war prisms. Wait, what is this? There we go. War prisms approaching our nexus point. Stalkers, yeah, that'll do nothing. And now I believe that we can start heading down the right or the left-hand side, the south side, because the enemy attacks here next. I'm very concerned about this immortal. Just whoever he's hitting, we need to dodge. Honestly, could have been worse. Really could have been worse. <laughs> you require my skills. I am here. Do, do I get an armor upgrade? Should I get armor <laughs> for my HP? I'm not sure it'd be that good. What do you think? I got the gas for it. Another pack of Zerglings is approaching our nexus from the south. Careful. Oh gosh, those Banelings are insane lings. <laughs> I'm glad that I intercepted them. And we're going to be able to grab this warp gate over here, which is good. I am the voice of the but everything else, I mean, those Banes, they just, they cause a lot of, a lot of damage. Oh gosh, these are very low. Oh no. More insane lings. No, no! It's so difficult! <laughs> oh my goodness, this is hard. Why did Stalkers Only? This was one of the easier missions because it's like just the mission I do Stalkers Only anyway. This is making me grow up though. Learn how to use <laughs> Blink preemptively. Sometimes. Most of the time I just fail. I have a lot of money that I need to spend. They're not attacking, are they? They better not be. Oh my goodness, this is a slaughter and not in the good way. Amon's laughing at me for that one. Ugh. Okay, so I'm going to admit there was supposed to be a joke there. I was supposed to be like slaughter laughter joke because, you know, they're very similar words. And then I just proceeded to forget to tell the joke. Oh, gosh. Do your best, Warriors. No! Okay, we are actually getting a little bit overwhelmed. We need to bring these guys back. Blink these as well to safety. Rejoin our forces. I think the splitting up was a good idea at the beginning. However, now with this huge number of Zerglings, it is tough to deal with. Okay, move forward and now try to march on these Nidases who have a nice little legion of guards. I should have cleared those out. Oh gosh, that is a Protoss attack wave during all this. Well, we got the battery bank. Pull back. Oh no! Oh, this is the worst! Things are not going as intended. We're going to clean it up though. We're losing the forge? That's fine. The forge serving as a bit of a sacrificial lamb right there, I am cool with. And then we gotta save these workers, even if it's gonna cost some stalkers. This is so many units, and the Nidises are still spawning troops. So now, and only now, can we actually start the aggression forwards. Get this walled off. How can we aggress when the when the Zergle encounters our units? Go, go. So, there is a world where we can ignore one of the triggers, the final one. And I'm thinking that we might have to do it, but it will involve clearing the defenders on both of the sides. It's just the event that we will avoid. However, right now, that's kind of looking fine. Not fine, but... Kind of looking required. Oh, 
Nope. It's hard to pay attention to which units are going to live, which is an interesting part. Because I blinked a couple times things that were not actively being attacked due to their target dying. I gotta think about that. There's so many things you gotta do when you're working with these fragile stalkers. I'm gonna pull back because I know for a fact that they're gonna hit me again. Right? That's really what they're gonna do. Another attack wave is gonna come, and if I'm not in position, I'm going to be turned into death. I'm hoping they hit from this side. This area is still well fortified. Having this Sim City over here is good, and these batteries have more energy. This area is walled off, so they shouldn't be able to get in again. I am going to drop one more battery over here, just as a please uh, don't be able to break through these pylons very quick battery. And see if we can make it work. Come on, Amon. Oh, he hurt me. <laughs> The scouts! They don't they don't actually do much. That's they're fine. So my brain is now telling me that I have to end this before the next attack. If I don't manage that, I'm probably gonna end up folding under the pressure. So the first thing I need to do is start clearing the final objective. I think. And that's gonna be a toughie. However, they are spread out in a fairly large area, so it might be beatable that way. No! This is bad. Just Mr. Immortal chilling out. Oh gosh, there's more mortals. Well, it is, it's going. It's just not going well. The extra mortal on the side was a game changer. It really was. I think this is the last immortal, though. State thy bidding. Got it. Now we can keep pushing. There's probably a hybrid reaver. However, I also feel like I have to pull back very soon just due to the power of the enemies that are probably going to attack me. I'm feeling the attack once again because of how long this has taken. But we made progress. I'm going to leave a zealot there just to try to defend against the the inevitable. Do they come up this side? I don't know, but I'm going to just work on a good tight defense. So my initial thought of the 20 minute attack wave seems to not be right. Uh, Starcraft 2 attack waves tend to work on very clock based systems. It's uh, a really cool system actually that is not based on when the attack wave comes, but when the attack wave arrives at the base. Oh, interesting. The 2040. It is a cool system overall though. It's uh, It makes everything easy to line up. It's kind of weird if you, like, think about it too much, but I'm not really good at thinking, so it's fine. I don't know if this is going to help. There's a hybrid here or two. Yep, that's too hybrid. I'm trying to dodge the hybrid volleys. And I think that it was working. But now they're attacking the same guy, and I can't deal with it. Overall, I dodged a lot of hybrid shots there. Probably like six or seven. And unfortunately, the zealot count is increasing. How much money do I have? Quite a bit, so I can keep it up. However, the enemy keeps up their ramping attack power as well, so... There's two sides to this story, and I was trying to give you the bias pro grant one. <laughs> I'm basically the Donnie Vermillion of shields only. Two hybrid reavers. This is not good for the grant. Hey, it went okay. No, no, no. We gotta leave a zealot over there just to be able to deal with random zerglings. 
Now we dealt with that attack wave about a minute ago at this point. Oh gosh, how do we target down a Baneling when there's a big guy? Not very well. Yeah, the hybrid are way taller than like any Zerg unit, which creates a very interesting issue when you're trying to target a Baneling. There we go. Can we stop with the Protoss guys over there, please? <laughs> They're just a little bit in the way. Okay, now the Zealot Guards are going to move to keep this safe. Third hybrid. I need a little bit of speed or something to deal with these Banes. However, I think that's the last of the Banes. Do I let a base trade happen? The answer might surprise you. Because I didn't ask should. <laughs> What, what are my options here? Oh gosh, I activated the event. I was looking at the mini-map. Uh-oh. We're gonna go this way, and I think we just have to out-micro the Ultra. Just slowly clear through stuff, and then once we have Blink on everybody, we dive and go behind. Yes! Okay, okay, we did it. Second try. <laughs> Look at how fast our base died! Even, even with all those shield batteries, it was just annihilated. Oh, okay, that... This run is so hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you are enjoying this... Uh, Shields only, where I have to learn to get good. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.